So I just got done with my first camping trip in my roof nest condor tent. It's actually amazing. I learned a lot and I learned about what I also need to bring. First of all, this thing is super easy to set up. I'm able to set this up in like two minutes, even in the wind. It was super windy last night and very cold. Ended up getting down to 29 degrees. Absolutely brutal with about 30 mile an hour gusts. And this thing held up tremendously. Let me walk you around some of the features. You have these big windows with these awnings that stick out so you can keep these open, but these strong supports over here, oh, keep this open, wide open so you can see all the way through. And it's gonna be great when I take it on trips where we're gonna have some epic views. Underneath here, you have an opening that you can stick cords through. So if you wanted to run cords from the car into the rooftop tent, I ended up having a battery. Uh, up there, so I didn't need that. But you want some power because there's LED lights that run underneath here and on the inside of the tent, so you have illumination inside. This hard shell tent was perfect because I put this on the side of the wind, so the wind was hitting this. It did not push down at all. It didn't really move at all because there's two gas shocks on either side holding this in place. I do have a solar panel on top to help charge that battery while I'm driving. This section here is the rain fly. You can remove this and just have the normal tent and that would that, that would be great if it's not windy or if it's not raining or anything or it's nice and warm and you want a little bit more breeze to come through because this does have a sunroof and that opens up all the way so you can actually look out and see the stars at night. It's also the same thing on this side. You have a gigantic window and right now I'm just airing out the tent so because you don't want mildew to build up or anything. This ladder makes it really nice and easy to get up into, but also it supports the section that's hanging over the car. Uh, you can adjust the, the height, but you want it so the top is locked in place, and when you put weight on it, that'll support this whole thing. Inside the tent here, you have a three inch mattress, which is very comfortable. But underneath the mattress, you have a honeycomb core, which helps support your body, and it distributes the weight evenly. So you have one mattress here, another one there, and these just fold over top of each other. There's plenty of room back there. That's where my head was at when I slept. My pillow was back there and my feet were right up front here. Extremely comfortable. But this is meant to be a review of what it was like in the tent for the first night. And I gotta say, it, even though it was freezing out, it was 29 degrees here with my electric blanket. I had a battery over there to charge, to power that electric blanket and I didn't feel any of the wind. I heard the, I heard the wind a little bit. Because of this fiberglass structure, I didn't hear it as bad. If this was a soft shell on this side, it would have been a nightmare. I wouldn't have been able to sleep. I would have been awake all night. Don't get me wrong, it was still super cold, 27 degrees. I, there was still some moisture in here. There was ice on, the, on here or some, some frost. I did get up a couple times. Uh, because I think the cold woke me up and my electric blanket didn't stay on all night. Now my first night was really just a shakedown. I have some big trips coming up. I'm actually going to be leaving in this tent for 25 days. And this was just a shakedown to see what I needed, what else I need to bring. Do I need a little heater? That's why I picked a really cold night. It's up in the mountain, it's at the top of the mountain. So it was quite a bit warmer down below, but now I know that I need to get a little bit heater or a bigger electric blanket or a bigger battery and just be able, so I'm a little bit more comfortable but more so, so my wife's a little bit more comfortable because she's gonna be with me uh, 14 of those days. We're gonna be traveling all over the West. We're on the East Coast over in Charlotte, North Carolina, and I'm gonna be heading out to Montana, Utah, Arizona, Nevada. See in the countryside and it's gonna be so much fun. Hopefully you come along with me because I'm gonna bring the camera and you're gonna be able to see through my eyes what we go through with this tent, also a Tesla. If you didn't know before, this is mounted on the roof of a Tesla Model Y. I have it lifted with some big tires and that's gonna make it better for overlanding or soft roading as we're calling it. And we're just gonna have a lot of fun camping in this and meeting a lot of people. Now, what is it like sleeping in here? I am six foot five. I fit completely in here. My pillow and everything were by the hard shell and my feet were by the door. Uh, at one point I did slide down a little bit. I noticed probably cause I was curling up. It was so cold and my feet did hit the door. But other than that, I, it was it was nice. This three inch foam mattress is quite, kind of firm. I did learn that I'm going to buy a small one that I can fit on top of here. What's really nice about this is as this folds up, you still have space over here. So on the way home, I left my sleeping bag up here and I could probably put my pillow or something else or that mat up in here. A lot more comfortable and gives you storage inside the car still. Just imagine waking up to epic views on the ridge of a canyon, looking out that way, 
uh, that's gonna be amazing. Another nice feature about having the tent on top of your car is the added security that you have. You're on top of your car, you're not on the ground, so you don't have critters crawling in here. You're above everything and you have the advantage. When you're higher up, you have the advantage. You have uh, some protection inside the tent for you and you're gonna hear if someone's fuddling with the tent and you can be ready. So in conclusion, I know I haven't learned everything that I'm gonna need to know for my trip in this one little excursion, but it's a good start. This is one of a very, very good tent. I'm so happy I teamed up with Roof Nest. And it's the Roof Nest Condor. It's really the only one that will fit on the Model Y, I think, because the Model Y roof is not very large. And I'm sure you're wondering, what's the weight limit? First of all, that's a rude question. Second of all, the tent is 130 some pounds. The roof can actually hold 565 pounds or 575 pounds on the Model Y. Plenty. That's a dynamic load because remember that honeycomb shell spreads the weight out over those bars pretty evenly. So that's why you can hold a lot more than you think on top of a Tesla because the roof is glass. But these rails don't actually touch the glass. Keep that in mind. But this, I was doing 70, 75 miles an hour down the highway, no issues. I think we're good to be driving across country. If you're interested in a roof nest tent, uh, I suggest looking at the Condor or the Condor XL. If you have a Jeep or you have a, a truck or something like that, you could, you could have the extra space. These are really nice. So it's super simple, closes up in like two minutes and you're ready to go to your next adventure. Check out Roof Nest. Mm -hmm.